Sometimes you sit in the rain, giving yourself the cancer grin and, well, not in the rain, just beside it, because God forbid you got wet. And you sit there thinking, 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 until finally even your thoughts get sick, get up, and walk away. And someone walks by, seeing your little pile of wet ash, and laughs. And you can keep on thinking, or you can laugh with them. But either way, you just smell like any other wet dog. And the laughing man has no idea that you were actually asleep. Or rather, as close to sleep as you ever get. And then Ramses comes along, good little Ramses. He purrs and rubs against your leg, and you wake up, or wake out, whichever is more accurate. You pet him and smile, and you get up and get on with the day, or maybe go back inside and lay on the couch you got off that same sidewalk. Ramses, cat child of the moon, full of feline grace and sacred form, he doesn't care that you never sleep, that you only appear to sleep doesn't care that the life leaves your eyes and that you do the oddest things in your dreams. Ramses is always there by your side, purring and healing, no matter which neighbor's pool you wake up floating face down in, or whose trash can you knocked over so half their rotten mangoes, their brown tampons, old condoms, and grapes cover you. Ramses will eat them off of you. Ramses is emotion in cat form, and he is love. All Ramses can remember is love, and you know that, because there's no other fucking way this cat would always be at your side every time you wake up. You know what, now that I think of it, the cat probably just sticks around because you smell like fish all the time, just like that hooker said. How else could that sublime creature be around a dipshit like you? fucking cat must be crazy too. All that crazy shit you do, it should be terrified of you. The earliest emotion you remember is terror. Terror at seeing your father come home and take off his black trench coat, seeing the gun strapped to his chest underneath. Terror at knowing at such a young age what that meant. Terror at the sound of deep bass pounding like war drums in the dead of night from cars as they circled the block. And terror that your father turned and watched the cars as well. Terror at the junkie running through the backyard, climbing the fence, the cops chasing him. Terror of the needles that your neighbor threw into your yard from his roof. Terror of your mother's face when she found you and your brother using them to sword fight. Terror when your dad didn't come home and you moved to the woods. You remember the final time you felt terror. You were lying in bed in those woods, far from the terrifying city, and you heard the strangest sound, like a red rubber kickball bouncing in the living room, just outside your bedroom. No one could be there in the dead of the night, bouncing a ball of all things, but you heard it. You tried not to hear it. You tried to hear it only in your head. But there it was, each bounce distinct and echoing, and you knew what it was. There was a demon in your living room, bouncing the ball, a monster with horns and fangs and a smile waiting for you to leave the bed. It took years to open your mouth and make the faintest sound, but to your mother, it was the loudest, worst sound she'd heard since the one she made when dad didn't come home. And your mother responded to the scream like a mother does. Wiping the sweat from your head, she explained, there was no demon, no ball. It was your very own heart pounding in your very own chest. You heard your own heartbeat for the first time in that dead silent wood without its war drum bass, and you still slipped into terror. But after that, even at such a young age, even being such a stupid little idiot, you realized all the real terror was inside of you. And somehow, you were fine. Just fine.
up. Except that after that night, you never slept again. Sure, it looked like you did, but after being found in a tree, with your ass in the refrigerator, on the roof in a karate pose, in your neighbor's bedroom, and in the car with it turned on and your feet barely reaching the pedals, your eyes wide open but as unresponsive as glass, mom knew you weren't sleeping. But after your dad didn't come home, and the move, and the protection, and your brother stuffing his veins so full of dope that his arms looked like road maps and his corpse looked like a doll, she really didn't have the time to care that you weren't sleeping. A bit of rope around the bed and a kiss on the head each night, and eventually the sunlight crept in and you're untied, dressed, and it's off to school you go. Mom's dead too, and you can live on your own now that you're tall and losing the hair on your head but have so much on your balls. Now is when you find Ramses, and the little cat guy watches the strange shit you do while you're supposed to be sleeping. Like last week when you lay down in bed and stared at the ceiling for an hour, and then the police found you in the next apartment over, making a cheese and peanut butter sandwich on top of the owner's dictionary. And although they can't believe how in the fuck you picked the lock in your sleep, everyone's kind of used to you now. And since you've never actually hurt anyone, no one gives a shit. No one gives a shit. And in any case, it really doesn't happen so much anymore. Because like I said before, you spend more nights sitting and smoking and trying not to fall asleep. And it's like every day is just another dream full of insects and lab coats sticking their tongues in your ear. And an old woman with snakes for fingers and warts on her tits reaching up between your legs to tickle your balls. And cockroaches setting up poker games in your mouth. Fucking roaches always cheat all of them. Ramses would pluck them from your mouth one by one and chew them up between his teeth if only they were real. Even you know they aren't there, but that doesn't change how you feel. Today was a bad day. While you were daydreaming, you climbed on top of your bed and did a swan dive into a lake of bile and fingertips. When you woke, your lip was split, your mouth tasting of rust and salt. Your left eye wouldn't open, your balls ached, and Ramses was underneath you. You tried to pick him up, and he folded in half, his front legs flicking and flying like a lizard's tongue. He made sounds you haven't heard since your mother made them for your dad and your brother. Those same sounds and you. You poor dumb bastard. You didn't even have a rock or a bottle or a large book or anything. So you finished him off with the shoe with the worn out heel. One, two, three hits. Many more hits than it should have taken. And after the first one, each successive hit made the regret and the doubt swell like a womb. But you had to finish what you started. You lay in your bed with the hot sun beating in through the window, mocking you, with your little fluffy pile of love still warm and wet on your chest. And you gave a deep sigh and felt the terror return. You lucky little bastard. You finally fell asleep. Doesn't it feel so good? It's been so long. This is potentially infinite. The sky is always purple and the people passing in the streets are gray shadows with shifting faces, making funny noises, and nothing bothers you. Nothing at all. Because you can just lie there with your love and know that things end. They really do even though the only part of you halfway not stupid knows that nothing ever ends. That same part knows that the waking is coming, and you'd better pray to God, to your gods, to mine, to any that will listen, that you don't wake up, because this time there's no happy sandpaper tongue licking at your filthy, pathetic palm.